Thank you for tuning in to this National Crokinole Association action. This is footage from the London, Ontario Four City Flickers Crokinole Tournament from March of 2024. Here we have a couple of staples in the NCA competitive scene of Justin Slater on your right and Ray Beerling on your left. This match will be a race to nine points to see who can move on toward becoming the champion of this year's contest. Ray Beerling first to act, draining that open 20, setting the tone. Slater answers back. Ray first to miss, coming up a little bit short and probably left an opportunity for Slater. He takes his time, gets the off and the 20. Up a 20 with the hammer. He's got a he's in a really good position. Ray comes up short again. Tougher hanger, but Slater makes short work of it. Slater in a great position right now, up two 20s with the hammer. Ray misses again. Funny angle this time, probably still workable. Let's see what Slater's able to do. Drains it off and the 20. Round definitely out of reach at this point. The first two points of this match will go to Justin Slater. Last couple of shots inconsequential. If you're enjoying this action, please like, comment, share, subscribe. Help spread the word about the greatest game on earth. And there's lots more action from this tournament coming at you. Garrett's been hard at work getting the editing and scoreboard done as we see a couple of highlight takeout 20s from Slater. Slater first act in the second round. Yes, we're looking to get this footage out pretty quick, so as soon as you're done watching this, flip over to more quarterfinal action from this great event. Oh, fantastic follow through 20 by Ray Beerling. Amazing shot. Slater unfazed, answers back. Slater? Oh. <laughs> you see Ray's head pop up in shock. What do you mean Slater missed? But he is on the right side of the hole. Let's see what, oh, that is tough. Both players a little bit off for a couple of shots here, but don't worry, I'm sure they'll bounce back. Ray deciding what to do with this one. Looks like he may be shifting over for a double. And he gets it in a great spot. Is Slater gonna try to push in or pull? Pulls back, but I think he would have liked to have gotten the off. Either way, he's got play over in his side of the board. Looking to hide, not quite what he was looking for. Probably gonna go for the 20 at this point. Doesn't get the 20, but man, that's a that is a tough spot. Beerling may have to settle for the tie. If he goes for the off on this one, he could lose a shooter, it could jam up, any number of things could go wrong. You see him standing up to get a bird's eye view here. As I've said before, Ray Beerling is really good at taking his time in these elimination matches. Doesn't rush anything. Not suggesting he plays too slow. He's just very, very wise about really thinking about what's the best option. Let's see what he settled on here. He decided the tie and uh, I can't argue with that. Watch this follow through 20 by Ray. Fantastic shot. Love seeing those follow through 20s. Another great shot here with his double takeout. Ray the first to act in this third round. Just a little bit off but left a very heavy hanger for Slater. Slater gets the off. Not even sure if he was going for the 20, hard to say. Beerling definitely going for the 20 on that one, came up a little short. Slater makes him pay for that minor mistake. This time Ray misses long. Slater content just with the takeout. He's got the 20, he's got the hammer, he's in a good position. I think he was going for that drift 20 and may have left the door open for Beerling to get back into this match. If he's able to get the off and the 20, which he does, great shot. Slater's still in a good position with Hammer, but not as good a position as he was. Wow. 
Players finding their range now. Back and forth with the 20s. Slater secures at least a point. All he needs now is a valid shot to secure two points, which he gets. Going up 5-1 to one in this race to nine. Great shots from both players. Slater first to act. Beerling comes up short and uh, not short enough. He's probably left Slater an opportunity here. Oh, lips out. Nice spot, though. Beerling maybe ought to get a touch 20 off of this. Mm, that was almost worst case scenario. Slater now with two discs to the outside. Nice shot by Ray. He forced his over. He got the one off. There was no way he was getting a double, but he forced that over. So now, after the next shot, it was going to leave Slater's, Slater's uh, buttons close together to give Ray an opportunity to go for that right there and force play back to the middle. Situation like that, Slater's going to be trying to keep the buttons on the outside away from each other to not open up an opportunity for a double. And Beerling's going to be trying to do exactly the opposite. Slater in a great position here. He's against the hammer, but he is up 220s at this point. Settles for a takeout. Beerling would need a 20 off each of his last two shots. That seals the deal. Slater up now 7 to 1 in this race to 9. Beerling with his back to the wall. You see him making a great double takeout there, though. Beerling first to act. Putting a little pressure on Slater. <laughs> I always enjoy a bit of animation at a Ray Beerling. A little long on this one, not what he needed. Ah. Slater probably quite happy with where his disc ended up, but not so much with not getting the off. Player sharing a little bit of a chuckle here on this uh, about this kind of odd situation. Beerling has to settle for the takeout. Again, I would suggest Slater likely happy happy with where his disc is, but. Uh, the dark discs are piling up on the board. At some point, Slater's going to need uh, one more 20, maybe a double take out, maybe both. Beerling was considering peeling to force Slater to come back into the middle. Opts to keep his disc on. Ooh, nifty. I like it. Leaves Ray with a tough shot, but it also leaves Ray with the possibility to do something really cool here. If he's able to go through his own to make the valid shot, the combo, and catch a peg. Gets the off, three on in the house. Now Slater very likely to go for a double which he doesn't quite get, but he, that worked out quite well for him with his shooter rolling to the outside. Beerling weighing out his options. Look like he's going to try to, he's getting wide enough. He's trying to come inside off of that light disc out in the five. Oh, catches the peg. Slater, great shot, secures the takeout, moves himself a little further out. There's no way Beerling's getting back in the house off of that one. I'm wondering if Beerling is going to peel. It would force Slater to either come into the house to take out that 15 or take out the 5 on Beerling's side, which will then Beerling may be able to use to his advantage. 
Beerling content to stick out there. That is uh, interesting. A great board control. That looks like a dead simple shot from the outside, but... Speeding things up here as Ray takes a uh, little longer than normal to uh, consider his options. But yeah, back to that shot that Slater just made that uh, to keep his, uh, get the off and just slide out into the five a little bit. Like I, I feel like that shot may be underappreciated, but that is, uh, it's not easy to do to have that level of control to move out toward the side. But uh, yeah, that was all Slater needed. A very interesting match, or a very interesting final round of that match as you saw the, you saw the chess match take place in that final round. Congratulations to Slater. Like I say, stay tuned. Check out the other quarterfinal matches as we work our way toward a champion in this NCAA tournament, the Forest City Flickers. Make it a great day.